If you've been wondering what layer masks are and how to use them, this short series of Adobe Tutorials on Layer Masking Essentials is for you. In this tutorial, we'll take a first look at how layer masks work before going on to examine specific uses for layer masks in the rest of this series. A layer mask is an overlay that you can add to a layer to control what to hide and what to show on that layer. To add a layer mask, first make sure that the layer that you want to mask is selected in the Layers panel. Then go down to the bottom of the Layers panel and click the Add Layer Mask button. That adds a white layer mask thumbnail to the right of the image thumbnail on the layer. Wherever a layer mask is white, it shows what's on the layer. So now you can see the entire photo that's on this layer. Wherever a layer mask is black, it will hide the layer. And wherever a layer mask is gray, it will partially hide the layer. Those are the only colors that you can use on a layer mask, since a layer mask is a grayscale item. Let's try painting with black on this layer mask to hide part of this photo. To set that up, select the brush tool in the toolbar. Then use any of the color choosing methods that you're familiar with to set the foreground color to black and the background color to white. One quick way to do that is to press the letter D on your keyboard, which sets the foreground color to white and the background color to black. Then press the letter X on the keyboard to switch those color boxes. So again, that's the letter D and then the letter X. Now glance over at the Layers panel again to make sure that there's a white border around the layer mask thumbnail, not the image thumbnail. That will ensure that you're painting on the mask rather than directly on the image, which you usually don't want to do. Now move into the image and start to paint. As you do, you're hiding the content of the masked layer so that you can see down through it to what's ever beneath it in the layer stack. In this case, just transparency represented by this checkerboard. If there were another layer below this one, you would see down to whatever was on that layer. And if you take a look at the layer mask in the layers panel, you'll see your black paint on the layer mask in the areas where content is now hidden. Now let's say that you change your mind and you want to bring back some of the content you just hid. To do that, all you have to do is paint with white on the layer mask. So press X on the keyboard and that will switch the background and foreground color boxes so that white is now the foreground color, and then paint over some of the hidden area to bring it back into view. So now you've experienced the big advantage of using a layer mask. A layer mask doesn't permanently change the image like erasing or deleting content might do. Instead, with a layer mask, you have the ability to bring back or fine tune what you've hidden at any time. And you can even do that after you close and reopen the image later as long as you saved it in a format that retains layers, like the PSD or the TIFF format. There may come a time when you want a larger view of your layer mask. To see that, hold down the Option key on the Mac or the Alt key on Windows and click right on the layer mask thumbnail. Now in the document window, you can really see the black, white, and gray paint, and if you want, you can paint with those colors right in the document window on the mask. When you're done, hold the Option or Alt key and click again on the layer mask thumbnail. And finally, if you want to delete the layer mask altogether, you can drag it down to the trash icon at the bottom of the layers panel, and then you can choose to either apply it before you delete it, in which case you'll be making a permanent change to the image, or you can just delete it and start again. So as you can see, you have lots of options when you're working with flexible layer masks. When you're combining images into a photo composite or a design, you'll often use layer masks to hide and show parts of each image. In this tutorial, you'll apply your basic layer masking skills to combine two photos into a simple creative composite. This file has a forest scene on the top layer and a waterfall scene on the bottom layer. We'll add a layer mask to the top layer that will hide part of the forest so we can see down through it to part of the waterfall below. Start by selecting the forest layer in the Layers panel. Then add a layer mask to that layer by going down to the bottom of the Layers panel and clicking the Add Layer Mask button. Here's the layer mask. Remember that on a layer mask, white reveals and black conceals the masked layer. This layer mask starts out all white, so it's revealing everything on the forest layer. Let's add some black by painting on this layer mask with a soft brush. Go over to the toolbar and select the brush tool. Set brush size and hardness here in the options bar. I'm going to choose a medium-sized brush. 
and I'll make it relatively soft to get soft blended edges as I paint. Now go down to the bottom of the toolbar to the foreground and background color boxes. Usually, when you have a layer mask thumbnail selected, as we do, you'll see white here in the foreground color box and black in the background color box. If you don't, press D on your keyboard to get that default color set up. Then press X on your keyboard to switch the foreground and background color boxes so that black is now the foreground color. And by the way, you can only get black, white, or shades of gray in these color boxes when you have a layer mask selected. In the Layers panel, double check that there's a white border around the layer mask thumbnail. And if there's not, click on the layer mask thumbnail to make it active. And now comes the fun part. Go into the image and start painting near the hollow of the tree. As you do, you're adding black paint to the layer mask. And that black is hiding the forest scene to reveal the waterfall below. If you take a look at the layer mask thumbnail, you'll see where you painted with black. If you want to bring back something that you hid, maybe part of the forest, just press X on your keyboard again to switch to white paint and paint over something that you hid. Continue to press X back and forth as you paint to switch between black when you want to hide the forest and white when you want to reveal the forest. So I'm going to switch to black again by pressing X. And as you paint, you can change your brush tool options. For example, I'd like to make my brush tip a bit bigger to match this area of the tree. So I'm going to press the right bracket key on my keyboard a few times. The right bracket key is near the P key on your keyboard. Another useful option is brush flow, which controls the rate at which the brush releases paint. Lowering the brush flow up here in the options bar will let you build up shades of gray as you paint on the layer mask, which will give you a more subtle look than pure black. That's because shades of gray on a layer mask only partially conceal, while black completely conceals. And I'll continue to paint, revealing more of the waterfall on the layer below the forest scene. Take your time refining your own mask so that your composite looks something like this when you're done. As you're painting, you can check your mask by holding down the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on Windows and clicking on the layer mask thumbnail. Here you can see the black paint that's hiding part of the forest scene and the shades of gray that are partially concealing it. To close this view, Option or Alt click on the layer mask thumbnail again. So now that you have some practice using simple layer masking techniques to combine images, Try them out on other images to make some creative composites of your own. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to use selections and layer masks together for ultimate efficiency and flexibility when you want to cut out people or things so you can use them in another image. I'd like to add a layer mask around this dancer so that I can hide the white background around him. Because this is a pretty complex subject, it would be difficult to paint a layer mask around him, so let's start with a selection instead and we'll turn the selection into a layer mask. Go to the toolbar and select the Magic Wand tool. For this example, in the Options bar, leave Contiguous checked. Click with the Magic Wand anywhere on the white background, then hold down the Shift key and click on any bits that didn't get selected originally. Next, invert the selection so that the person rather than the background is selected. To do that, go up to the Select menu and choose Inverse. And if you're wondering why we didn't select the person in the first place, it's because it's usually easier to select a solid color background than a more complex subject. Now, here comes the important part. We can use this selection to automatically do our layer masking for us. With that selection active, go over to the Layers panel and click the Add Layer Mask button. That creates a layer mask on this layer that automatically includes white wherever there was a selection and black where there was no selection. I'll make that layer mask bigger for a second so you can see that. Because on a layer mask, black conceals and white reveals, the black paint on the layer mask is hiding the background from view in the image. And it's doing that in a way that remains editable. Now let's add this dancer to another image, a design that we have open here in Photoshop. Notice that I have a second tab at the top of the document window. And when I click that, you can see the design that we're building. Make sure that you've clicked the tab of the Dancer image, and then go to the Layers panel and click on an empty part of the Dancer layer. Keep your mouse held down and drag all the way from the layer up to the tab of the Design document. Keep your mouse held down 
and move into that image and then release your mouse to drop the dancer and his layer mask into the design. Now to scale and position the dancer, press Command T on the Mac, Control T on Windows, and drag any of the corner anchor points in, and then click inside the boundary and drag the dancer into position. Then press Enter or Return on the keyboard. Because we used a layer mask to isolate this dancer from his white background, we have lots of editing flexibility. For example, let's say that I really don't want this little hoodie tie in the image. I'll move over to the Layers panel, and this is important. I'll make sure that the layer mask thumbnail, not the image thumbnail, has a white border around it. Then I'll go over to the toolbar and I'll select the brush tool. And I'll make sure that black is my foreground color. I'm going to press X on my keyboard to switch the background and foreground colors there. So black is in the foreground. And then I can just click and drag over that hoodie tie to remove it from the photo. And I'm just hiding it on the layer mask. I'm not permanently deleting it so I could change my mind and bring it back by painting with white there. So that's how and why to use selections and layer masks together to isolate a person or an object so that you can bring them into another image or even replace a background. Layer masks are a great way to hide and show content when you're working with image layers. But did you know that layer masks work the same way when you're making photo edits using adjustment layers? Let's see how that works in this tutorial. By the way, in case you're not familiar with adjustment layers, they're just a more flexible way of photo editing than making adjustments directly on a photo layer, using a command from the image menu, for example. So let's start by adding an adjustment layer to this photo. In the Layers panel, I'll click the New Adjustment Layer button here, and I'm going to choose to add a Hue Saturation Adjustment Layer. That creates a brand new layer above the background layer that contains the photo, and that new adjustment layer comes with its own layer mask, which you see right here. With this adjustment layer selected, in the Properties panel, you can see the controls for this adjustment layer. And by the way, your Properties panel may not be located here. It might pop out on top of your photo. So here, I want to increase the saturation. Keep your eye on the photo as I do this. I'm going to take it way up, more than I normally would, so that you can see that this is increasing the color saturation throughout the photo. Now, you may like the way that looks on the sunset, but not the way it looks here in the ocean. So what we want to do is use the layer mask the layer mask that comes with every adjustment layer to control exactly where this effect appears in the image. Go over to the toolbar and you could select the brush tool, make sure your foreground color is black, and then paint on the layer mask in this area to hide the saturation adjustment from there. But I want to show you another way that you can add black, white, or gray paint to a layer mask, whether the layer mask is on an adjustment layer like this or on an image layer and that's to use the gradient tool here. And this is a great way to get a smooth transition between areas affected by an adjustment layer and areas that aren't affected. So I'll select the gradient tool. I'll make sure that black is my foreground color and white is my background color. And if it's not, press X on your keyboard. And then take a look at the first option up here in the gradient tools option bar. It should show you a black to white gradient. If your gradient doesn't look exactly like this, then click on this option, and in the gradient editor that opens, select the black to white preset and click OK. Now remember, we want to hide this adjustment from the bottom of the image, but have it appear toward the top of the image where there's sunset. So I'm going to start at the bottom of the image where I want black to hide this effect, and I'm going to drag this line up toward the top of the image. Now the length and direction of this line will change the effect that it has. And you often have to do this several times, and that's okay to get just the look that you want. So let's try it like this. That's not too bad, but I really think that it's hiding the saturation throughout too much of the image. So I will try again. I'll start at the bottom, and this time I'm just going to drag up to about this far. And that's doing just what I wanted. It's showing the saturation effect in the sky, but it's hiding it where it was too strong down here at the bottom of the image. Let's take a look at the layer mask to see why that's happening. I'll hold the Option key on the Mac or the Alt key on Windows to show you the layer mask here in the document window. And you can see that it goes from black through shades of gray and up to white. And where the mask is black, it's hiding the saturation effect. 
where it shades of gray, it's partially and gradually revealing that effect, and where the layer mask is white, it's completely revealing the increased saturation effect. Let's go back to the regular view again, so that I can remind you that you can have multiple adjustment layers on the same photo. So you may want to try adding a brightness contrast adjustment layer, increasing the brightness in the ocean, but trying to hide that increased brightness from the sky. And you would do that by dragging a black to white gradient from the top to the bottom. So give that a try on your own and experiment with using layer masks on your adjustment layers to target exactly where your photo edits appear. After you've added a layer mask, you can fine tune it using some controls in the Properties panel and the Select and Mask workspace. We'll take a look at both in this tutorial. Here I have an image with two layers, this Dancer Outdoors on the top layer and this stage on the bottom layer. Let's hide the outdoors so we can put the dancer on the indoor stage. And we'll use a layer mask to do that. Now because this is a relatively complex subject, the best way to start that layer mask is with a selection. If you're following along, try using the Quick Selection tool to make a rough selection of the dancer. I've already made that selection and I've saved it, so I'm just going to load it in to save time for this demo. With that selection active, you could go into the Select and Mask workspace and try to fine-tune the selection itself, and that's fine. Even if you do that, you'll get another chance to fine-tune the mask that we're making from the selection. So let's skip right ahead to making the mask. I'll go down to the Layers panel, and I'll click the Add Layer Mask icon. And that adds this layer mask to the dancer layer. The black part of the layer mask represents what wasn't selected, and the white part represents what was selected. And the black is hiding that outdoor background, as you can see here in the image. But the mask isn't perfect. So there's some fine tuning to do at the mask edge. And even before we do that, we can go into the Properties panel and look at the controls there. The density control makes the black paint on the layer mask less dense. In other words, it's making it gray. And where a layer mask is gray, it becomes partially revealing. And so we can partially see down through to the image of the dancer outdoors. I'll put that about here, just for a little unusual background. There's also a feather slider here. And if you drag that, it blurs the edge of the mask. I think in this case, we'll leave it at zero. And then from here, you can access the Select and Mask workspace that has lots of controls that you can use to fine tune the mask. When you click there, a separate workspace opens, and this is the same workspace that you may be familiar with from fine tuning selections. Over on the left are some useful tools, including the Refine Edge tool here. With that tool, I'll move into the image, and I'm just going to drag over these areas where I can see some of the original background where the mask isn't perfect. And up here in her hand, maybe over here. You can take more time than I am right now. But the idea is to just clean up the mask edge. There's another tool that comes in handy, and that's the brush tool. And with this tool, you can manually paint to fine tune the mask. There are also some useful sliders over in the properties panel on the right in this workspace. The smooth slider will smooth out the mask edge, the feather slider, just like the feather slider in the properties panel, will add a little bit of softness to the edge. And the contrast slider will do the opposite. It will crisp up or sharpen up the edge. And then if you need to, you can pull the edge in by dragging the shift edge slider to the left if you have any little bit of haloing. Down in the output settings, choose to output to layer mask, and that will refine the same layer mask that you started with. And then click OK and that closes the Select and Mask workspace. If you need to go back in again, you can do that by selecting the mask thumbnail and then clicking Select and Mask here in the Properties panel. So those are some ideas about how to fine tune a mask after you've added it to a layer.